Do I have to pour my own coffee? Yes, you do. <sighs> this is like a diagnosis. Yeah, I mean like, I feel like I should be getting served on. Oh, Zach, you're the best. <laughs> By trade, I'm a metal fabricator. Most people know me from television shows. I've had a love affair with cars my whole life. I build them in my shop, and I race them both on and off-road. I hosted a show called Extreme 4x4, where I taught millions of people how to build roll cages and metal fabricate, and so on and so forth. Our Bruiser 8 chassis is constructed with inch and three-quarter DOM tubing. After that, I became television host of things like Mythbusters, Overhauling, All Girls Garage, The List, A Thousand One Car Things to Do Before You Die. Obviously, everything is very car-centric because I have a degree in custom automotive fabrication. All of this came about because I really love driving, and I love driving really fast. I've also raced Ultra 4, which is some people know it as King of the Hammers. Rock on right, take it easy. I have a national championship in the spec class, KOH win in the spec class, stock modified win, and I have a stock modified finish in the unlimited class. I've podium finished at the Baja 1000 multiple times. I'm the fastest woman on four wheels. I hold a land speed record of 398 miles an hour. My most recent top speed is 477.59. I ride motorcycles almost on a daily basis. Anything between Harleys, BMWs, Triumphs, you name it. The most recently, the Grand Marshal for the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally for the 77th, and I was the first female Grand Marshal for that. So I think with everything that I've done, this is this is kind of to me like the pinnacle, or like something is happening. I'm at, I'm at, we're at this pivotal moment of times are changing in the automotive industry, and I'm I'm just pretty stoked that I'm. I don't know if I'm on the forefront of it, but I'm there, and it's pretty rad. <laughs> That's right, boys. I'm the new marshal in town. I grew up in the Black Hills of South Dakota. My father's a mechanical engineer, so I definitely have his mindset. My great grandmother used to race cars, so she would race anything from like Stanley Steamers to Volkswagen Beetles. She put all of these miles on these cloth tires that were like well beyond their rating, and that was Goodrich tires, long before they became BF Goodrich tires, and she ended up becoming a spokesmodel in the Sunday Times for BF Goodrich tires. So. She ended up passing away about four months after I was born. My mom swears up and down that her spirit, her adventure, her class, everything jumped right into me. I don't know if I got class, but I think it was just instilled in me. I was literally almost born off-road. My mom was out camping when she went into labor with me. It was probably three or four days old and I went to my first Georgia's motorcycle rally. I think I was just born into it. I think it's in my genes. I didn't know anything different. There wasn't anything that told me that I needed to do this and there was nothing that told me that I should stay away from it because it's not what girls do. To me, I love going fast, I love performing, I love winning. I absolutely, I'm a great loser, but I really like winning. <laughs> I really enjoy the art and the creative side of being a builder. I mean, obviously I like being stronger, lighter, faster, all of that stuff, so that plays a big role in the driving side. But if all I could ever do was be a race car driver, mission accomplished. My dream build is always going to be the next one because I learn so much in every build and I'm like, oh, the next one's going to be better, the next one's going to be different. And then I have the luxury of being able to race and drive so many different cars, pre-war era cars, all the way up to futuristic cars. I have a love for anything and everything and if somebody comes to me with something like, hey, let's build this, as long as it's not cheese ball, I'll totally do it. Uh, 2016, I was out to set a new land speed record and we're still in our testing phases with the North American Eagle, so we don't know really what we're up against. And it's, you know, it's a 57-foot-long car that weighs 14,000 pounds. We're out in the middle of nowhere, literally southeast corner of Oregon. Nearest town is at least 45 minutes of gravel road, and all they have is a small store and a gas station if we're lucky. And we had been having issues with our steering. The main driver of the car ended up doing a test run. Everything seemed fine on his, except for one of his parachutes failed. And then we got the car running, everything seemed to be really good and it was my turn to get in the car and I'm going for my record run. I'm, this is it. This is my record run. I'm all in. I'm in afterburners before I even hit mile one and I start noticing that the car is drifting a little bit left and I can't correct it so steering is going back to not doing what it was supposed to be doing. And at this point I'm going approximately 477 miles an hour. So I let out of my throttles, turn on the speed brakes which are just wind resistant panels. We have this super sweet electromagnetic brake system and then my high speed chute failed to deploy 
My low speed chute failed to deploy and the car is still going left, not going down the longest part of the lake bed, it's going more towards the shoreline. And so when I start seeing the pucker bushes, that's about probably the first time I ever thought that I might not live to see you tomorrow. 40 feet before the bushes, I was still going 100 miles an hour, and I, by the grace of God, something happened, the car stopped. Literally, like that, there's like this gnarly berm of sand and bush ahead of me that I should have stuffed the nose of the car into it, and 40 yards in front of me. You can't get addicted to it because you can't do it often, so it's, you know, like it's this unicorn that you're constantly searching for but it is the most thrilling, most amazing thing I've ever done. It's, you know, it's so fast, it's slow, it's so loud, it's quiet, it's so bumpy, it's smooth. You're out in the middle of nowhere, you have no way to gauge your speed, so I just wanna go faster. All I'm trying to do is just go faster, because all I wanna do is break that 512 record. My worst injury was when I was working on Extreme 4x4, I had a 550 pound industrial sized bandsaw fall on me, taco my head to my knees and burst fracture my L3. So I have an L1 through L4 vertebrae fusion. Total freak accident. If I could explain it to you how it happened, I totally would, but even to this day, like it just stops right there. So lucky enough where I didn't become paralyzed, I always had feelings in my legs. You know, I had five days laying in the hospital thinking like I could still lose feeling after they give me surgery. So I have two seven inch rods running up and down my spine, four hooks at the top, two giant screws at the bottom, and then my L3 is just mashed potatoes. I still go into things knowing that what I do is dangerous. It's not like I go in thinking like, what could possibly go wrong? Nothing. There are no limits for gender, there are no, you know, the throttle pedal doesn't know if I'm a guy or a girl, but am I indestructible? I do think I heal really fast. I'm kind of like the Wolverine. Probably skipping across water. It was a remake of Cannonball 3. In the movie, we figured out how it was made. They had a ramp, they had a table underneath the water halfway through and then the car was able to make it all the way across, which is great. Well, we built a ramp. We built our platform off of the Fiero. So the car launched and it was practically destroyed. And then we had a backup Fiero where we took the jump away and we skipped it across water and it actually worked. It made it all the way across water. And I think that was probably one of the funnest ones because there was, there was a build involved and we got to put nitrous on one of the Fieros. And being a Mythbuster was really rad because they kind of, made it car-centric during the time that I was there, and I felt really special about that. So we got to do a lot of really cool stuff. Desert racing for me is where it's at. I feel like there's always a constant challenge, what we're up against for the terrain versus if it's going to be boulders or sand or silt or hard pack or gravel or even pavement sometimes. Like, I really enjoy desert racing because it kind of keeps me on my toes. This year I'm going to iron woman the Baja 1000, which means that I do not share my driving responsibilities with anybody. So I've secured a truck through Greiser Brothers, which is obviously the creme de la creme. It's probably gonna get me to the finish line quicker, so when I have a chance to step it up, that's great. I think the one thing that I'm up against is my energy levels. Like, what's, what am I gonna be like in hour 24, or hour 30, or however long it takes? Not a lot of women are taking these risks to say, hey, I can last the entire Baja 1000 and I can drive the entire thing. And all we're trying to do is just show other girls what's possible. I've never done it, so I don't really know how to prepare for it, but I can talk to people like BJ Baldwin, um, Kurt LeDuc, you know, Ivan the Ironman Stewart, talk to them, even, even Roger Norman, the owner of SCORE, like, they've all Ironmaned it before, so I have a lot of really great people I can ask. You know, my, my favorite thing <laughs> that I heard from BJ is, is finish first, die later. I just passed 13 cars. I'm gonna die on fire, big fucking deal. A couple years ago, started up a little lifestyle company called Real Deal. 
because everybody tells me and a lot of my friends, oh, you're the real deal. You know, because I think that there's this whole fakeness of what's going on with social media and people pretending that they can ride motorcycles or people pretending that this is something that they do or they're known as a race car driver or motorcycle racer and they're just not. So I think there's this whole false sense of what really is us girls that are really hands-on and really doing it and there's all these other girls that are just like I'm really cute on a motorcycle so we started Real Deal to really promote and empower those women who are out there doing it hands-on and are really active in the industry and in a sense to hope inspire the other girls to become hands-on and to become tangible with their projects and what they're doing so we go around and we set up our booth and we do welding demonstrations. We put tools in their hands, let them melt metal together, let them make mistakes, let them see if it's something that they even like. Our goal is to interest them in something like pinstriping or painting or leather crafting or whatever it is, blacksmithing. We want to be able to just kind of give them that opportunity to try it without the intimidation factor. And if they're excited, then they can come and sign up for one of our workshops that we have at The Real Deal Shop and, and we'll do a more intensive day classes, two day classes, whatever, depending upon the course itself. And we'll teach them in hopes that they might want to have a career out of it or you know, who knows, they might have a little business on the side. They just, the main thing is, is to let them know that tools are not a scary thing. Wheelies. When you see like a Harley bagger at 12 o'clock, <laughs> or you see a shitty van lifting the front wheels, you see anything doing a wheelie, it's hard to not. Oh yeah, it got him up, go back more. And it's one of my favorite things, like I don't care if it's a grandma on her scooter. Wheelie, I don't know, I don't ask her to do a burn -up. <laughs> like wheelie. Too well. <laughs> and that's really hard for me to say, because I love all wheels, but like two wheels, especially living in Southern California, the traffic here is miserable and I don't do well with it. Like if you ever want to see me get anxiety, like sit in the car with me in rush hour traffic. Oh my God, an two wheels, there's freedom. 360 degree view of awesome all the time. And you just feel like you're more in control and it's more fun and it's more nimble. You can go places that cars can't go. <laughs> I don't think that could be sad. <laughs> oh, I, ooh, uh, there's, let me just put it in one little bubble. There's not really one moment that defines Sturgis or a wild moment because every year brings something different and usually every year there's at least 10 things that are super wild and crazy. But when you can wake up at the Glencoe campground and watch a dude walk his dog and the only thing that he's wearing is his boots, his denim cuts, and an Ascoff scarf, that's when you know that you have seen Sturgis. No, it was not Dump Truck. Ad Dump Truck always has his bottoms on. He always has like some sort of skinnies, right? No, this guy, <laughs> just his vest and his boots. I ain't had pants on in days, it's been pretty great. Woo! He's always on. Okay, I'm starting to get hot. Can I take my shirt off? Yeah. Like the ember of a wild raging fire. What were we talking about? <laughs> this one. This was five minutes of hell. I literally ended up upside down in my chair of like, just get it over with. This one is the worst. And like getting my fingers done was the worst. And I got tattoos in some pretty painful places. The armpit wasn't as bad as you think it is. Like, yeah, it sucked. So like right there was probably the hardest part because it's really thin skin right there. But inside the armpit wasn't all that bad. That's my credo, no regrets. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't have a problem with it. I'm just, I'm just here for a good time, right? I like to race, I like to play, I like to have a good time. But men, they get all weird around me, so yes. I, yeah, I don't know if I've, yes, I've, I've actually made a laugh. Hate it! <laughs> <laughs> Ah! <laughs> <laughs> 
At this point, the plan is for me to be driving a bomber chassis in Unlimited class, which happens to be the exact same car that Randy Slauson won in three years ago. So he became king in that car, so I now have a truly competitive car in the Unlimited class. I'd really like to get into rally racing. I think that's really where it's at. Car control in rally racing, at those speeds, off camber, flying through the air, I think that's probably one of the coolest forms of racing there is. I was your first female Hoonigan athlete. Is your tongue completely seared from drinking the hottest coffee on earth? I'm Jesse Combs. I'm Jesse Combs. I'm Jesse Combs! Welcome to the Wales Vagina. Do you guys mind if I just stay and finish this cup of coffee? <laughs> you want some creamer? Only came out of the It's not. We could probably make that happen. Yeah,